Bonjour. Hello, my name is Jean-Jacques Tolépine. I've been a caregiver for Amélie for more than 10 years. I chose to work at Amelis after I applied several places following my training. This company appeared to me to be the better organized and it follows the values most important to me in the job I was searching for. What I like best is to create a rapport with people and visit them at home, to avoid them feeling lonely. Bringing them a little ray of sunshine during the morning or afternoon visit, or any of the activities we can have with them according to the time of the day. It is simple. We try to recreate a social link that was lost, because the home care nurses, the parents, don't always have time or cannot. So, the caregivers, we are the people they see the most often. We are their ray of sunshine, their link with the outside. Through us, they can have close contact with people every day, and not just material assistance without any affection. Even though, in theory, we are not supposed to get involved emotionally. I'm very happy to find out that I won the award. It confirms my choices in this career. I'm real proud to work with the Vezinet team. We share the same values in what we do on the job. My name is Elaine Doherty. I'm from Ireland and I've been with Comfort Keepers five years. I know when I went to Comfort Keepers, I didn't actually realise what was happening until I had an induction day. So I was kind of like taken back and going, oh God, is this really for me? Is this what I want? So what I said was, I'll give it a shot. And I gave it a shot and I've just never looked back. I just loved it from the time I started. So, and then some jobs now you can go in and it can be challenging. And we have some clients that are challenging, but I, I just, no, I like what, what I have, I'm happy with. It's so rewarding because of the clients. You can see them, like, at the, they're coming up, like, they're getting older, they're getting on, they're, you know, but at the end of the day, um, you like to see them comfortable. You like to see them, you're happy. You like to see them engaging. So, yeah, it's very important. But I love that. I love to see the, the people. Like, I have another lady who hates going to daycare centre. She won't go. But um, when you go with her a few, t well, I went with her a few times, and uh, now she loves getting her hair done, her nails done. So like everybody's different, but yeah, I love that when they're they're just out there and they're living a bit, you know. You have to have a bit of empathy. If you don't have empathy in the job and a bit of respect for the client, I feel that you, well, you won't get far. And if you don't, if you don't um, chat to them and make them feel comfortable in their own home, like um, you won't get very far. So really, you kind of have to have the. I don't know, you have to have that kind of calmness with you and just go in as if you're their friend and, you know, make friends with them, a bond with them, a connection with them. And, uh, yeah, it makes me feel good. See, each client is different, so, like, each household is different. So, like, it's not the same routine, the same job. Every day is different. And that's why I think, that's why I, think I love it, you know, and different people all the time. My life, to me, it's family, relationships, it's meeting people and you gain close friends, yeah, definitely. It's rewarding because some people kind of need that little bit of a push, you know, and some people are great, you know, everybody's different. I like it. I love going to work. <laughs> Winning this award is, oh, it's tremendous. It's, it's something I never expected in a million years, doing something that I love every day. To make people smile, to make them laugh. Oh boy, we've had some, <laughs> uh, we've had some wonderful laughs. And it just fills me up. I want my clients to feel at ease with me. I, I treat them like a family member. You know, it's a lonely time being at home, you know, when you're 
elderly or sickly or there's something wrong with you. Uh, as in now, my client is not much older than I am and she has a debilitating disease. You feel disconnected with the outside world. And so it's important that I get there and I bring some of that outside world in. Some of the stories that I can tell them, what I did, makes them feel more connected. You know, she loves to, she gets her hair done, she likes to, um, the same things that I like. She likes to do, she likes to shop, she likes to look good, you know, and I make sure that she can have that. There's a lot of uh, reasons, personal reasons, why I have become a, a comfort keeper. This, this is where I'm, I, will, I will be for the rest of my, my time. I had a client this is a few years ago. She's gone now. And uh, <laughs> she always called her. She always said, oh, my Kathy, my Kathy is here. I would read to her, um, visit with her. The stories that she told me, I could tell you word for word today what those stories are. They were so important to me. And I would tell her stories of my mother. So she connected to me through my mother and I just oh, I miss her and I'm, I'm so thankful that I was there to to be her cat so that's when I go into their home I see my family and what they need and what they want and I'm their daughter. I'm their, their person they need. You know, I just hope someday if I can't be there for my mom, that someone, a comfort keeper, will be there for her and give her that S sense of security and the link to the outside world. My name's Anne-Marie. I've been married 26 years. I have two daughters, um, Chloe and Tegan. They're my world. They know my passion for what I do. They think I'm a, a bit of a superhero. I do find, sometimes in care, that the elderly seem to, they're so grateful for even the basic needs, like helping them put the shoes on or the socks, and they'll say I'm such a burden. I'm sorry to be a burden, and that's like, no, 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 no. You know, they're not a burden. They're amazing. They're so wise. They're wise, and it can come across as quite cheeky sometimes. Very funny. I have a lady every single day, and we have social time. This lady has Alzheimer's, and it's progressed. She doesn't want pity. She just wants little reminders of who she was. When you watch somebody with dementia or Alzheimer's, it's, it's you just, you know, don't, don't agree with everything they say. Take them back. Take them back to what, what it's all about. Them, their marriage, their babies, their family. Um, my granddad had dementia and we were very young and um, we didn't understand. And we used to just giggle when he did these kind of things, you know, he was not making sense. And, and it wasn't until he stopped, when he stopped saying our names, that was when I thought, I want to look after somebody before it gets to that stage. This care of the year was just like, oh my God. I couldn't imagine, I still can't, that I got this for doing something I love to do. I'm just, I'm so grateful. So my, my husband was quite emotional because he goes smash it Cody because it's like care of the year. And so that's my new nickname. And he was really emotional because it is, he, 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 he just, well, yeah, it's 
sorry. Just be mean. Sorry. It's emotional because you you just want to know they're okay and they're happy and you know you've made a difference to them. Then that that's everything. I'm Denise Langston. I'm a comfort keeper. <laughs> I've been in retail forever and ever and ever, and you know, retail is thank thankless. So one day I was, a woman knocked down a shirt, and I was like, to my in my head, I'm like, if I'm going to clean up after somebody, it's because they can't clean up after themselves, and you know, the light bulb went off. When I was in school, we did clinicals at a rehab center, a nursing home, and a hospital. So, well, they didn't seem like a right fit for whatever reason. Okay, so we'll try home health, see how that works out. It turns out it is the most rewarding experience I have ever had because these people need our help and we could give it to them. You're gonna make me cry. <laughs> it's just keeping people busy and making sure that they're active and safe and they can live the best quality of life in their house while they can because that's what it's all about. I have had so many clients that I met for the first time and so thank you for coming and I really loved you being here and I hope we see you again and that's the best part that they welcome you back. It's just so rewarding and it's wonderful. One client I found out loved gardening but she was afraid to go out in the yard by herself and she didn't have any family close. And she had a dog she loved to walk but it's hard to maneuver a dog and a walker. So that's what we did. We would go to the flower shop and pick up flowers. That made her so excited and so happy just to walk her dog and sit in the yard and work with her flowers. And it just makes such a difference in their lives. Oh God. <laughs> it was one of my first cases. And I knew she had late stage Alzheimer's. And by the time I've met her, she would just wander and pace. And so along the way, she was doing her walking and I walked in and I said, good morning. And I'm like, Did I don't get a smile today. And she just, you know, does her walking because she didn't quite know how to do it. Well, I was sitting in the chair one day and from behind, I felt this. She looked at me, I looked at her, and she gave me this big smile. <laughs> I cried. I called the office. They cried. <laughs> and even in the end, she was happy. It's just not a number. They're not just a client. It's somebody's mom or dad. One client said, I don't know if you realize this, but you're more than just a caregiver to me. If my mom needed help, I would want someone like me to help her. I want to know that someone's in there that's compassionate, respectful, caring, loving, patient, lots of patience. <laughs> and I just am so satisfied knowing that my clients are happy. That's enough, knowing they're happy and safe. That's what it's all about. I think there's a common misconception with elderly care and a lot of people think oh you know it's, it's bad it's hard it's this and that and they don't think about all the good they don't think about getting to know these people they don't think about um, learning history I had a client that um, he was a World War II vet and I, I was very close with him like he <laughs> he shared all of his stories he served every day of World War II that one was hard when he passed away. Like, I was super close with him. Um, and that, that's why I do what I do, is just getting to know these people on just that, uh, that personal basis and that one-on-one -on -one care. Being a comfort keeper is being a friend and a listening ear and a shoulder to cry on. 
to see somebody's face light up is just a great feeling. It's an amazing feeling um, to know that you're you're being a positive impact in these people's life. I had to go out of town and my mom called me and she's like, hey, I need you to come home. So I come home and um, I have like three of my bosses in my house and they have balloons and a plant and cake and everything. And I'm like, well, what, you know, what is going on? And they, uh, they're like, you know, you got caregiver of the year. And I, honestly, <laughs> I didn't say anything. I just stood there because I'm like, I don't know how to react to that because it was, I was shocked. I was very shocked. I didn't expect it. I honestly, I can't put it into words how much of an honor it is and how happy it makes me feel because I don't, big things, good things like that don't happen to me. And so it was just like, oh, here you go, you know, this big deal and it just, uh, God has just blessing after blessing. It makes me extremely happy when these clients, when these clients tell you that they're thankful for you um, and that they're happy that you're coming. And I love it, I do. It is honestly the best job. I've never worked for a company like this. You don't get hired at Comfort Keepers and just be a worker. You're with a family, and that family really cares about you. I came to Comfort Keepers five years ago. It's the best job I've ever had in my life. And I've learned so much about myself and what my strong points are and my weak points are by give, being a caregiver. They have so many stories and so much history. I've lost both my parents, so it, oftentimes I learn a lot from them what my grandparents and parents would be teaching to me. And if you really slow down and you really listen, every day you will learn something. And that's what I love about my job. And then you learn going in like what little things you can do for them to make them have the best day they've ever had. And that's what I strive for on a daily basis. I want my clients to have the best day they ever have had every day because I, it might be their last day. I care, I really care about these people. I um, like them, I enjoy them. They're, they're, they're just, <laughs> they're all so different. I take care of another person that is a veteran and he's had a major stroke. This is a man that they said would never walk again. I've been with him for four years and every day we just shoot for one more thing. Could you get up and give me one more step? Lynn, I don't want to. I went in just this last week and he said, Lynn, I'll be right there. And usually he comes out in his wheelchair. He walked out. He walked out. He didn't have a walker or anything. And he was toddling. And I'm like, oh, dear God, don't fall. <laughs> don't do And he looks at me and goes, I'm not going to fall. And he walked over to me. And he gave me a really big hug. And he said, thank you. And I said, what? He goes, you're why I walked out. I wanted to show you what I could do. I burst out into tears. And I thanked him very much. And I begged him to grab a cane. Because he was <laughs> He was leaning really far forward, <laughs> and, and I thought to myself, oh, my word, and he said, I did this for you. Nobody believed in me, you know, and, and I just said, I'll never stop believing in you. They don't want to be sick. They don't like being sick. I don't like them being sick. I don't like having to be there when they're like that, but I will never leave. I'll never leave their side, and I want them to know that, and they do know that about me, and their families know that about me. When you walk into a room and you see someone in a wheelchair that's so happy to see you, oh, you're finally here. Oh, how long will you get to stay? Oh, do you think we could have grilled cheese and tomato soup for lunch? How could you not feel good? How could you not feel good? And that's what it's like for me every day. I love what I do. When someone looks at me and tells me that I'm the most important thing in their life, and that without me, they would have no life. That's moving. That's really moving. A gal at my church said, you know, you, you love seniors. And you know, I'm the senior activity director at my church. Why don't you be a caregiver, you know? I said, well, I'll give it a try, and I did, and I love it, and been there since. 
because I had a wonderful mother and a wonderful grandmother and, and I took care of them towards the end of their life, I thought, wow, you know, there are people out there that don't have children, even some of them, or other people to take care of them. And I thought, why not go help those folks? The rewards are much better, I think, for me than it was for them because they, they appreciated every little thing you did. I have one client that I've been, she was my first client and I still see her. At first when I started to visit her, she was grumpy. And um, I realized she was like that because she was in pain. I thought, let's see, what is she taking? And we'll talk to her family and so on. And so they decided to check with the doctor and take her to the doctor and so on. Got her some pain medication for her headache and she started to relax. She wasn't so crabby anymore. So then I was able to talk with her without her crabbing at me, talk with her and learn some of the things that she had been through, different stories that she would tell me. And she enjoyed telling me all these stories and she began to actually smile. And that made me feel so good. I felt like I had a part. There are so many of seniors that don't have care, compassionate care. And that's, that was kind of hard to take at first. My mother, she, had a, she worked all her life, hard working woman. My father was a coal miner in West Virginia. Towards the end of their life, my dad died of um, black lung. And my mother, she had white lung. And she was to the point where she could hardly breathe. And so the last couple years of her life when she couldn't do hardly anything, I would, I had to feed her and I had to take her places and do things for her that she couldn't do, which was such a shock. And I saw though, whenever I was there, she would just smile. And she would say, oh good, um, can I have a ice cream today, you know? So things like that I saw made a difference in her life. So I keep those up here for other people that I can use later. I think she'd be thrilled. Um, she'd say, I taught her well, didn't I? <laughs> she would take credit for it, but that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, she would really like that. I kind of just fell into caregiving. Uh, I was looking for a job. My aunt was a caregiver and she said, you'll either love it or you hate it. I started, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with Comfort Keepers. I just loved if I'm going in somewhere where they don't have family, they don't have daughters here, sons here, they're in out of state, that I just want to show them that, you know, they're worth, they're worth it. They are still living, they can still live their life. They don't have to be discouraged. And that's the most rewarding thing to me when that gets through to them. I didn't have a sibling that I grew up with until I was nine, and so I was kind of raised by adults, and I was always around adults, so um, I just kind of connect with people who are older with me, so uh, like in the geriatric field, I just love it. I love hearing their stories, and I'll talk about my life too, which they're interested in, but their stories are way more interesting because they've lived a lot longer, so um, yeah, I don't really know. I just, get, I just connect with people of that age like really well. The generation gap doesn't have to be a it is a factor, but it doesn't have to be impossible because I, I see a lot of ladies who are in their 80s and you know now I have just a lot more grandmothers, just a lot of grandmas. My main client that I had, uh, he had ALS and he couldn't move anything. Um, he couldn't really talk, but listening was still so important. I remember one time he traveled a lot. We traveled a lot and we were I don't know if we were on a fun trip or a doctor's visit, but we stopped at a convenience store called Bucky's. We were waiting for his wife and uh, there was music on and I like to kind of dance to music. So I was just kind of doing like this and he, I caught, I saw him looking at me at the corner of his eye and all he could move was his shoulders and he started doing like this and we just had a little dance party in the convenience store and it was just, you know, things like that. I mean, we're just people. You just gotta connect with people, which I think is what Comfort Keeper's goal is, is connecting with people and caring uh, for them, but you can't care without connecting first. He just passed away in May. Um, it was in April, and I went into work like any other day, and uh, he was not feeling well. And 
he was watching The Chase, which is just one of his game shows that he watches, and I was watching it with him, and he was doing um, um, some kind of like a medical procedure that he had to do every morning, and I, it's always, it was always my goal to make him laugh, because it was rare, because, you know, his life was hard, and I, the people on the game show were doing terrible, so I made some joke, and he, and he smiled, and that was the last time that I saw him while he was, um, uh, while, well, he got sick, and he wasn't really there after that. So that was the last time that I saw him like that. And I just remember that that, that memory. So. I see so many people that see people with disabilities or handicaps um, as, as that, as their disability. And so that has taught me like going on through life, if I see somebody in a wheelchair or I see somebody in a more advanced wheelchair, like they're still a person. There's still a personality behind there. There's still, a, they love, they have joy, they have feelings. They're not just you know, someone who can't talk or is very, has a bad, you know, diagnosis. Once you connect, then they're kind of like a family. My extended family has grown so much in the last three years. If you have a client that you love, it's not hard work. Yeah.